Shepard. Um, he is like the very top of our organization. And um, you're, I mean, you just, this call is going to be amazing, I know, because um, you're very smart and, um, and you know this business well. Um, so you got it. We're going to listen to every word you say. And I'm going to be at the edge of my seat listening and taking notes. And um, I really appreciate um, all the mentoring that you do and um, everything you do for, for our team. And uh, we're very, very, very blessed to have you as our top of our upline. And, um, and so this is, this is going to be a great call. And, and do you have anything else? Uh, you are a retired attorney, right? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yeah, I'll get in. I'll get in a little bit to my story as we kind of go through um, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, a couple things, as Christy mentioned, I'm I'm one of the founding coaches. Uh, I wasn't super enthusiastic, which I think is somewhat of an understatement, about this business when it started. Uh, I was in at that point my seventh year of law practice, and that's what I was going to do. I, I was going to be a lawyer, and um, I'm actually a fourth generation lawyer. So that's all I ever really knew and all I ever really wanted to do. And um, this business came along. Um, my business partner and sponsor, Monica, uh, was approached by Carl because he was looking for teachers. And she was a teacher and he knew her from Tony Horton Fitness Camps. It, it's about as complicated as that. And she was also really involved on the Beachbody message boards back in the day. And he was looking for people from different professions and teacher was one of them and Monica was in the right place at the right time and started the business, got going. Things were going really well for her pretty quickly. She was super passionate about it. Uh, our journey with Beachbody actually dates back to 2003. That's when we first did Power 90. So, uh, you know, back then you could email Tony and he would just respond to you because there was you know, nobody know who he was. Um, and, and so I'm really fortunate to have been around the company uh, before Team Beachbody was created and then watch Team Beachbody get started. Um, as I said, I wasn't super into it, um, but I was like, hey, Monica, go do whatever you want. Uh, I'm never going to do that. I remember in, I was in the shower when she asked me, you know, hey, I'm going to sign you up as a coach. And I said, whatever, I don't care if it helps you. That's fine. I'm never going to do that business. So, you know, whatever. And, and I'm actually, I actually was put on an inside leg as a result. Um, my business is not on some crazy power leg. Um, Monica's is, and we've always built our businesses together. We have five business centers now. Um, and um, kind of a funny separate story on that. Uh, Beachbody hasn't announced this yet, uh, but I think they will next Thursday. Uh, my two business centers, which again are located on an inside leg uh, away from the growth, the growth that's there is comes from us. Uh, it have reached the million club mark. So that's a million dollars in cumulative commissions between those two business centers, which again, were placed on an inside leg because I said I was never going to do this business. Don't make that mistake. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, if you're signing up your spouse, you know, make sure that they might just, they might be not be telling you the truth because circumstances change. And that's really what happened for me um, on September 15th of 2008. Uh, the largest, one of the largest investment banks in the world, Lehman Brothers, uh, went under. There's a really good movie about that whole thing now, um, the name of which is escaping me, but it's Brad Pitt and Steve Carell, and it's fantastic. Um, and it's about the whole economic meltdown. When that happened, my law practice was completely destroyed. Uh, I was doing real estate development, and there was no more money. And without any more money, uh, my law practice no longer viable. And so I was sort of looking at two options. Number one, uh, start over. And, and do a, do something different with the law, uh, knowing that I was probably gonna get fired along that path. Um, or uh, look at what Monica was doing with Beachbody. And at the time she was having a lot of fun. <laughs> she was uh, you know at home, um, she had stopped teaching by then and was having a lot of fun with the whole thing. And I thought, you know, I, I should give that a shot. I don't really have the skill set I thought I needed for that. Um, because I wasn't very good with people at the time. I wasn't a very good communicator. Um, and, but I felt like that was something that I wanted that freedom. That's what I really wanted was the time freedom. It was never really about money. It was more about time freedom. And um, one of the first things I did, I was very fortunate by this time. So this is like end of 2008, early 2009. Beachbody's kind of got its, its stuff together. The, the first year, you know, we didn't start this company as Team Beachbody. This company actually started called Million Dollar Body which is one of the reasons I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to tell people, join my business. It's called million dollar body. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. 
by then they had changed the name to Team Beachbody, and I was like, okay, Team Beachbody, I can get behind. I love the products, um, have always been a big proponent of them. And by then Beachbody had hired some people to help us understand how to do this thing. And, and one of the things we were introduced to was uh, something called a game plan. And the game plan was a 10, 10 sort of rules or steps or however you want to look at them for success with this business. Um, that game plan has been boiled down to the four vital behaviors. And about a year and a half ago, Jimmy Hayes Nelson, who's my success partner, which is one of our 10 things that we're going to go through today, and I were talking, we were talking about training for our teams, and we wanted to do a live event where our teams could get there, and we thought, you know, we should revisit the playbook. And we brought it out, and we looked at it, and we thought, you know, structurally, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Sometimes the way these, the way these things fall is not really chronological, necessarily. I'm a very analytical person, so I like things like chronological order. Um, and, uh, and it needs to be updated, because when we learned the game plan, I didn't even have a Facebook account when I started this business at the end of 2008, or a blog, or a YouTube channel, or a Twitter, or an Instagram didn't even exist. I mean, you know, there's so much stuff that's kind of gone between, between now and then that I've had to figure out and learn. But we have these 10 rules. And so what we did is we took them and we, and we really updated them. And so I'm gonna go through today these 10 rules. You should find a, a document that looks like this in uh, the Team Extreme group. Um, you can use that to follow along or take notes or kind of whatever works for you if you want. Um, and I'm going to kind of go through it. And as I mentioned earlier, this is what the four vital behaviors came from. So if you know those four vital behaviors, you've already got four of the main of the 10 rules really down. I'm going to touch on those, but I'm going to sort of assume that you've had enough exposure to those four vital behaviors because I know what happens in your group. And I know that you guys have a lot of training on those on those things as I think does everybody, and you hear it from Beachbody over and over and over again. So I'm gonna to touch on those things, but I'm gonna spend the majority of our time today on the other six. And along the way, you'll sort of hear a little bit more about me. So the first rule is be here a year from now. And I think this is the number one thing you can communicate to people even before they become a coach. This is something I start to talk to people about when during the recruiting process. You know, I make sure they understand that Again, I've been a coach for 10 years. I've been really a full-time coach for eight now. And in that time, I've sponsored hundreds of people. I don't even know how many. I, it's, I've lost, way lost track of that. And I've never met anybody, not a single person, who came in 100% prepared to do this. I've met people who have had experience in network marketing. Um, they needed to have a journey with our products. They needed to understand what Shakeology was all about and, and why it was the price it is because of the quality. They needed to you know, have, a, have an experience with a fitness program and then go down that path and learn all the things they need in order to coach customers with that because we're really a customer-based uh, business while a lot of other network marketing companies are not. They're, they're all rep-focused. Those people were not ready to be coaches. They needed to do that. That's going to take time. I've met people who have had, um, you know, a great experience, you know, had the whole transformation story from super unhealthy to just as healthy as you could ever want to be. They need to learn what network marketing is about, right? So I've never met anybody who's done both of those things. <laughs> I'm not, I'm open to the, I'm open to the idea that there might be somebody out there, believe me, but I've never met that person. Instead, what I want people to do is commit to learning, right? It, 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 what ultimately you do here is you go through this four-step process. You learn new skills, and then you practice those skills for a while. And if the things you're practicing are really good, solid habits, you know, if they're healthy habits, uh, then you have success, which is the third thing, in your health. If they're good, solid business practices like the stuff I'm talking about today, you'll have success in your business. Then you teach people how to do it. Learn, practice, succeed, teach. That's how this thing works. Until you've learned, you can't teach. I can't teach you Japanese right now because I don't know Japanese. I would have to go learn Japanese and I have to practice Japanese for a long time and then I'd have to demonstrate that I knew what I was talking about to get a license to go teach Japanese. Then I can go teach Japanese. Thankfully, this is nowhere near that complicated, okay? It just takes time. It's gonna take time for you to learn what you're doing as a new coach. And again, this is, this is A for you, but also as you're sponsoring people, 
for you to learn what you're doing as a new coach, then practice that those skills for a little while. Then you have some success with them. That's when your team starts to build because part of the skills that you should be having success with is recruiting and bringing more people on and sponsoring them so that your team grows. Then you're at a point where you can teach. That's going to take at least a year. In my experience, it's going to take at least a year. So you need to commit to that now. And I just tell people, you know, when I'm working with a, a brand new person, if they tell me, hey, I'm giving this thing six months, I go, you know, I, I will tell them, you know, you really should probably go right now. Um, I'm sorry, I just got a note. I'm trying to shut my Facebook up here. Maybe I can do it that way. Can you guys still hear me okay? Yeah, good. Okay, I'll just turn the volume down and then um, my Facebook notices won't um, go nuts. So that's be here a year from now. Okay, it's about making a commitment to this business that you're going to be here a year from now. If you do that and everybody does that, and along the way you commit to the other nine things that I'm going to talk about, you can have success here. Number two is plug into the support system. If you would not believe the number of people who um, come to me with sob stories about how their upline doesn't help them. I, it's amazing to me, the amount of people. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I was lucky. I had Monica as my upline. Monica's upline has never sponsored a coach in her downline. There was never a training that was put together. Not involved. <laughs> That's just the truth, right? She created it all on her own. What we recognized, though, was that what people need to succeed is structure. That's really what they need in order to succeed is structure. And you can create the structure for people and you can create the training for people. You can't force them to dial into it, to plug into it. You can't force them to go through it. You can't force them to implement it. All you can, can do is create an environment where people can be successful. That's true whether we're talking about health and fitness or whether we're talking about this business. All you can do is create the environment for them to be successful. Some will, some won't. That's how this whole thing works. But it's up to you as an entrepreneur to take control of this on your end. Okay, an entrepreneur is somebody who assumes the risk, all the risk of the success or failure of a business venture. I'll say that again, that's my favorite definition of entrepreneur. A person who assumes all the risk of the success or failure of a business venture. What that means is that if it works, it's because you did it and you made it happen. If it doesn't work, it's because you didn't do it and you didn't make it happen. <laughs> so you have to take charge of that and you have to look at the structures that are available to you and then plug into them and take advantage of them. I'm a part of your of this of this Facebook group that we're live in right now. And I see what happens here. I see all the support, all the resources you have, of everything you need to be successful. So if you find yourself at some point saying, Oh, it's Christy's fault that I'm not having some success, or or some or anybody else's fault that you're not having success, I'm gonna tell you that's just not true. That's just not true. Because it's really up to you to plug in and take responsibility for these things and do it on your own level. Number three is personal development. Again, one of our four vital behaviors. Well, the, the story I just told you is really, I think, the key to personal development. Personal development starts with you, okay? The, becoming a great coach starts with you. You have to be a leader of self before you can lead other people. You know these people in your life. You see them everywhere you go. They're constantly, you know, we have, a, we have we're overwhelmed with people in our society right now who want the government to fix their life. You know, and when the candidates, whoever they are for whatever office, come around and say, I can fix it, they go, oh, thank gosh, somebody's here to fix this thing because I can't, I couldn't possibly fix it myself. That's a really broken mentality. You, that's not a leadership mentality. And I can just tell you right now, nobody wants to follow that. Nobody. Okay. I don't want to follow somebody who can't lead themselves. If you can't lead yourself, why would I follow you? There's no reason I would. If you're not at that point, you've got to go through and you have to learn how to do that. That's another reason you need to be here a year from now because it might take you more than a year to figure that out, okay? When I came into this business, I had some real strengths. I had a lot of self-confidence. I was very organized and I'm smarter than the average bear and I'm willing to work until my fingers are nubs. That's me, okay? What I didn't have skills in though, was talking to people, empathizing, getting to know them, being more interested in them than being worried about how interesting I was being. I didn't know how to do those things. I just didn't have those skills. So I had to take some time and develop those things. And I was fortunate that I had a mentor who looked me in the eye and said, look, it's not about, just about 
being organized and focused and diligent and hardworking and, and all of that stuff, you, this is a people business. This is a relationship business. You can call it MLM. You can call it network marketing. You can call it whatever you want. At the end of the day, this is about relationships. That's it. It's about relationships. And the, the, the team, the person, the group that has the strongest relationships is the one ultimately that will be successful. That's just how it works. So I, I took that on and I said, okay, well, what do I need to do? And he told me, so, well, you need to understand yourself first. Starts with you. And then you need to start understanding other people. And it gave me a book to read. It's right here by my desk. And it's the first book I have everybody read. It's called Personality Plus. It's by a woman named Florence Litauer. <laughs> Personality Plus, how to understand others by understanding yourself. And it's about the four major personality types. It's helping you understand your personality type. So that if you're somebody who's like me, I felt like I was a weirdo. I thought there were two types of people in the world, people like me and complete idiots. That's not a very successful way to go through life when you take 75% of the population and just shut them out right away because they're not like you. <laughs> Good luck. That's not how this business works, right? I had to take control of that, okay? And personality plus is really what I use to do that. You may struggle with something else, okay? There are other people who are on the relationship side of life. They're not task focused. They struggle with getting stuff done, but I'll tell you what, they're your best friends because they, you, they're the people you always want to talk to when you have, you know, things in your life that happen. Those are the people you reach out to. You don't reach out to the taskmaster people. You reach out to these empathetic, connective, um, relationship people. Some of them might be the people, the person you cry with. The other, the other group of people who are like that are the group that you're going to go out and have a good time with, and they're going to make you laugh. And that's how they interact with people. Those people tend to be really disorganized and they're a little flaky and they're usually late and they have to take control of that and get a little bit on the other side in order to get stuff done. Okay. It takes more than being a, a, the happy go lucky, fun loving person or the super empathetic person to make a business like this happen. You need to be organized. You got to show up on time. You have to recognize when you're speaking to somebody who's over on the other side of the ledger and is a super task oriented person, you've got to know that. Okay, I did a whole thing on this at our pre-summit meeting where I divided the whole room up into four groups and then explained to them how they interact with themselves and with each other. And then talk to them about what, what happens when you're, you're approaching somebody about becoming your business partner, which I'll get into here as we go through this thing, what that looks like for the super fun loving person versus this, you know, super fun loving person versus the person who's like a spreadsheet addict. It's a very different thing. If you don't have the ability to recognize A, where you start and B, where other people are at, you're going to struggle unless you're just an anomaly. Some people are, you know, some people were raised by perfect parents and they, they just have a great ability to do everything. I know very few of them. Most people are like me and, and they had a rough childhood and are kind of screwed up and they need to go to work on themselves. And personal development, I think if when people ask me, you know, what's the key to your success, that's the key. That's the one. And it's the hardest one because it's about looking in the mirror and taking responsibility for your life and understanding your strengths and weaknesses and coming up with a plan to capitalize on your strengths and work on your weaknesses. And that takes time, which is why you got to be here a year from now. All right, let's move on. Uh, number four, push play drink shakeology. This is another way of saying be proof the product works. Um, and that's all that is. You know, you've got to go through, you've got to have a journey, you've got to be on the path. I do not believe you have to be a fitness model. Um, I think in some ways, uh, sometimes people are too fit, you know, because in it, in it, it's almost unapproachable, you know, and they have to market to a smaller group of people who are like the elite fitness group of people because that's where they're at. And, and Joe ordinary goes, man, I could never get that six pack. You know, I don't believe you have to do that. I also think there's a really good market for that. I'm not trying to discount like being super, super fit by any means. Uh, but I think you got to be on the path and you, you got to be on a journey and then you have to do number five, which is to share your story. Number five is share your story. You can't share a story you don't have. Okay. And I'll, I'm going to talk a little bit about that as it applies to the business, because when you're starting, that's kind of what you're doing. But your story looks like this. Here's the format for, for telling a great, a compelling story with uh, when it comes to Beachbody. Um, the first thing is my life before Beachbody was like this. And you need to paint a picture for me. I need to know, I need to know what your life was like. What didn't you like? 
What were you dissatisfied with? Maybe it was your weight. It wasn't my weight. I, you know, I, even back in the P90 days in 2003, I lost like 30, 35 pounds. You know, I rehabbed my knee though. I had a knee injury. I tore my ACL when I was about 26 and it hadn't healed correctly. Um, and I was kind of a broken old man at, you know, age 36. It wasn't cool. It wasn't okay. And or not 36. I was younger than that. Whatever. It was like 32, 31, 32. Um, I, I was broken though. And that's my journey is I healed that. I healed that knee. So that's what I talk about. I just posted something on my Facebook yesterday about how I've always been an athlete. I found an old picture of me in a high school basketball jersey. And I was like, you know, I've always been an athlete. I, that was taken away from me for a period of time. And I gave up on it. I, I was wearing a knee brace, knee brace to go play golf. It wasn't okay. It was not okay for somebody who's always been an athlete and is an athlete to this day. I'm like race track bikes on a velodrome now. I, 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 I ski. I, do, I, I, I surf. Like I, I can't sit still my life would really suck if that had been taken away from me and it had been, and I was miserable and I was unhappy. What was it for you? You know, when I talk about the business, I talk about being trapped in air conditioned boxes. That's what it was for me. I was going from air conditioned box to air conditioned box to air conditioned box from my home to my car, my car to my office, from my office to my car, my car to the gym, from the gym to my car, from my car back to my office, then in my car back home all day long air conditioned boxes. That's not a life I was born to live. And I had to change that. This business was the way that I changed that. The important piece here when you're painting this before picture is that you talk about what you were dissatisfied with. The reason for that is it gives people something to attach to, okay? It gives them a way to say, oh my gosh, I'm dissatisfied with that too. I'm just like that. You know you're telling a really effective story when people respond and say, I feel the same way, or I'm just like that, or wow, that happened to me yesterday. That's how you know, you painted the picture. It's emotional, not factual. And that's the area that people struggle with. Um, so that's the first thing. My life before Beachbody was like this, and here's what I was dissatisfied with. Then I found, what did you find? You can tell this story in terms of, for me, I told you in 2003, I had a busted knee, and I was all wrecked, and I was an old little old man. I found Power 90. What did I do? Which is the third thing. So I found the solution. I did these things. What I do? Well, I worked out every night. I just push play. That's what I did. And I changed what I ate. That's what I did, right? If I'm talking about the business thing, oh, economy falls apart. I'm in a desperate situation. I'm totally unhappy doing what I'm doing. And now I've got to rebuild it anyway. May as well start over and go chase after a life that I really want. That I found Beachbody. I did. I worked my face off is what I did. That's exactly what I did. I, I woke up at 5 a.m. every single day. I worked for about two hours before anybody was even awake. Before anybody was even awake. Then at lunchtime, and then I went to work and went to my law job at lunchtime when my buddies were going down to Chili's and complaining about work and eating, you know, chili french fries or whatever and nachos. I was either at the gym with a P90X shirt on, no headphones, because no one wants to talk to somebody who has headphones in their head and I needed to talk to people. Or I was at Starbucks with my phone and my laptop trying to make connections. And I'd come home, I'd eat dinner after the kids were in bed. Instead of watching Game of Thrones, which wasn't even on TV then, I think it was more like The Sopranos at the time. I didn't watch any of those shows. There's a whole like, there's a whole like four or five years of shows I never watched. Instead of watching those shows, I went into my office and I worked. And it worked and worked and worked. That's what I did. So again, my life before Beachbody is like this. I found, I did. The next thing is, and, and when you talk about I did too, let me pause real quick. Talk about I did too, particularly in the fitness arena, this is a great opportunity to add value. What did you do? Did you find a specific nutrition plan? Was it the containers that you started eating these containers and you just found, wow, this is actually something I thought that was so complicated that just isn't because you just, there's color coded containers and it's not that hard, you know? Was it for me, like it was scheduling my workouts. I recognized that I was an absolute slave to my calendar. Anything that was on my calendar was getting done, period, end of story. So what I do, I put all my workouts on my calendar. And yeah, my secretary thought I was a little bit crazy, but I explained it to her and I was like, look, if it's on the calendar, then it gets done. If it's not on the calendar, then it's optional. And I don't want it to be optional. I want it to get done. And so I'm going to schedule all these workouts. You can just disregard them. And she said, okay, crazy, whatever. 
but that's what worked for me. That's my opportunity to share some value with people, give them some freebies, right? Hand it out so that they know, oh, here's what I did. I'm, I'm going to advise you, try to stay away from beach body here, like uh, away from terms that people don't understand, like challenge pack. People don't know what that means or diamond coach, like stay away from those types of terms. Just add some value, add some value to what your experience was. It's free advice. It's your opportunity to give it. Um, so again, <laughs> my life before Beachbody, what I was dissatisfied with. Number two, what I found. Number three, what I did. Number four is really simple. What my life, now my life is like this. You know, now my life is like this. I don't wear shoes. That's my life. Okay. I just don't wear shoes. Well, I hate wearing shoes. So I don't, I don't have to wear shoes. I can just work in shorts. I'm dressed up today. I put on a collared shirt for you guys. That's my life now. Now, does that mean anything to you? Maybe not, but maybe you get it and you're like, oh, you used to wear a suit every day and now you don't have to wear shoes because you're your own boss and you set the dress code in your own house, right? Now I control my time, 100%. You know, this morning went down to the beach. I went to go surfing, there was no surf. So I grabbed my dog, I put his life jacket on and we went swam around the ocean for about 45 minutes. That's my morning. Not grinding it out in a commute, not yelling at some other lawyer on the phone, None of those things, which I used to do. My life is like this now. I've also been able to travel around the world and go to all these cool places. And I have some of the best friends and the best relationships I could ever ask for because I took myself on and I changed and I did all that personal development and I started to find people who I fell in love with. I allowed myself to do that. That's what my life is like now. And by the way, at 45, I'm pretty healthy. I race bikes around a velodrome now, <laughs> okay? Like at 45, I'm in like the best shape of my life. Life's pretty good, okay? Paint that picture. Life before was like this. I'm spending a lot of time on this because this is like outside the realm of the four vitals and this is what works. My life before Beachbody. What I found, what I did, life now. If you tell stories that way and you paint vivid pictures for people and, and you do it with a Facebook post and wherever else you, you know, Instagram, every, this works everywhere. And on video, and on video. Tell your story. And then tell people, be able to tell people live, you know, that's another thing. Like we don't do enough. One of the things Christy was asking me about, like, I was like, well, what do you want to talk about on the call? And she's like, well, what about like, you know, business posts to recruit? And I'm like, I don't really do that because I haven't found that it works. So I just don't do that. What I do do is tell my story. That's what I do is I tell my story. And then at the end of the story, there's a call to action, which is, I guess, the fifth step, right? It's the call to action. Like, Hey, if you, if this resonates with you and you're not happy with where you're at right now, get in touch with me, which I guess is the closest thing to like a recruiting post that I would ever put up because I just haven't found any degree of success doing those things. It works really well on the fitness side. Now, let me give you a little twist on the business side of telling that story, because this is, this is something where what a lot of people tell me when I tell them, here's your format for telling a story. They go, well, I haven't done anything with this business yet or even worse. I've been here for a year and I haven't done anything with this business yet. Okay. Well, a, you got to get busy doing that, right? Because I'm not going to follow you if you haven't done anything. <laughs> but the other thing is when you're, when you get to the last part of the story, what your life is like now, it's really what you're excited about now. So I just, you know, I, if you're, especially if you're new, just started this business, uh, you know, my life was like this. I was unhappy with whatever it was you were unhappy with. You know, maybe it was a car payment that you couldn't make or whatever. And that inspired you to become a coach. I found Team Beachbody. I did the, the training, the work. I plugged into the support system. I did all that stuff. Now I'm on the path and I'm excited about my future because I'm going to build this business. One of the things I used to tell people when I was talking to them about joining my business early on was I would explain to them, look, this train is going to its final destination. It's final. At the time I was living in Phoenix, Arizona, I hated it there. I, I'm from here in San Diego. This is my home. And I said, I'm not going to live in Phoenix. <laughs> okay. I'm going to live in San Diego and I'm going to live on the beach in San Diego. And I live about 200 yards from the beach here in San Diego. This is where I'm going to go with my life. And this is what I'm going to do. That, this train is going to go there. It's going to end up at that station. It's stopping in your station right now. You can get on or not. It doesn't matter to me because the train is gonna end up there whether you're on it or not. But this is your opportunity 
to get on it and go with me. Does that mean you're going to move to San Diego? No, it means you're going to be a part of the train that creates a tremendous amount of momentum and we all achieve our goals because I can't get to San Diego unless you get you whatever it is that you want, which is another thing I recognized really early on in this business that my job was not my goals. My goals were not my job. Your goals are my job. If I help you achieve what you want to achieve, I'll get whatever I want. The train's going there. Creating, understanding, having this vision for what your life can be and what this business can be for you and being able to communicate that to people as you're telling your story. Now, I found that there's really kind of four types of people who get involved in this business. The first group of people are here just purely to get a discount on their supplements. That's it. The second group of people want to earn enough money to get their supplements paid for, you know, 150, 200 bucks a month, something like that. The third group of people, and I think for those first two groups of people, the four vital behaviors are fine. That's all you need. Four vital behaviors, just do that. The third group of people, though, wants to make $500 to $1,000 a month. And that's usually because they want to do something that they haven't previously been able to do. That might be pay, that might be pay off a car payment. It might be going on a vacation. It's, that's your thing. That's where you have to identify with what it is that you're doing. And the fourth group of people are people like me who are, you know, a freight, you know, just a bullet train to San Diego. Like I'm going to do this thing and along the way I'm going to be there for my kids and be home and they come walking in the door and do all that stuff that you get to do when you work at home. There were career people, but that was, those last two, you need these 10 things and you need to do all of them. And the, the, the four vital behaviors is just not enough. You know, they're just not. And, and I have encouraged Beachbody to pick this up and take a look at it because for those two, the last two groups, if all you do is the four vital behaviors, you're not doing enough. You're just not doing enough and you're not teaching people to do enough because part of being in those last two groups is finding people who want to go where you want to go. <laughs> okay. And again, it's not the destination, it's the journey, right? So that's, that's share your story. That's one of probably the most important and was one I've spent the most time on probably the most important one of these things. And I think the one people get wrong, what they do instead is they post links or they use beach body graphics and they go buy my thing. It's, it's not much more complicated than that. It might be, I love this program so much. Or, oh, the shake is great. And it's like, no one cares. No one cares. It's boring. It's boring. And it's, it's really, um, it's low level marketing. Okay. That is low level marketing. Don't do that. Tell your story. People will connect to you. Most people, when I tell them this, they kind of go, my story's boring. Really? <laughs> it's boring. And then I say, well, why don't you tell me your story? And invariably, it's fascinating. They just think it's boring because they live it. <laughs> That's it. it. It's probably better that it's a little bit boring. You know, if your whole story is about climbing Mount Everest, guess how many people want to do that? Not very many. Guess how many people out there just want to lose 20 pounds to look good in a cocktail dress for a wedding that they've got to go to in three months? A lot. A lot. So tell your story. That's the connection. That's what builds that connective tissue with you people, with, with other people. And if you use this, Format, it'll work. The next one, number six, is make a list and use it. I'm just going to get a little bit of energized here. Um, important, important, important distinction here. There's marketing and inviting. They are two different things. They're connected. They're connected. But they're different. People confuse them. People think marketing is what I just talked about. Telling your story, that's marketing. That is, that's you marketing you, not Beachbody, you, and your connection to Beachbody maybe, okay? That's marketing. What marketing does is it generates interest. Generates interest for you. It gets people to say, ah, oh, I'm just like that. Or, wow, uh, I think I could do that. That doesn't sound so impossible, right? That's when you get to inviting, okay? Marketing leads to inviting, but they're different. What I see a lot of people doing again is a lot of marketing and they go, I'm inviting, I'm inviting, I'm inviting, I'm inviting. No, you're not. You're marketing and marketing's great. You got to market, but this is what you see. If you sit around and watch the top coaches, which I don't recommend you spend a whole lot of time doing. So probably totally different people than you are and marketing to a totally different environment than you are. Like, you know, I know kind of foundational things about your team. It's very different than some of the other teams who, are, uh, you know, a little more flashy, maybe is the right, I'm trying to like be politically correct here, but I think you guys know what I'm getting at. You know, there's certain pictures that people are willing to take and other people aren't. 
If you're following people who are doing that, they're not marketing. You're not marketing the same people. Don't follow them. They're not your people. Okay. They're not going to lead you to any sort of, you know, great uh, thing to drink out of. All right. Marketing leads to invite. But what people do is they market, market, market and say it and say that they're inviting. That's not inviting. Inviting is number six. Make a list and you use it. All right. You need to have a list. I have a notebook. It's flipped to a different page here, but I have a notebook and it's got a bunch of names on it and it sits right next to my desk. This is nothing fancy here. I don't have, I don't use Teamsy. I don't use some big fancy, uh, you know, anything. I use a notebook. There's a notebook. And when I tell a story and somebody says, wow, that's a great story. I'm, I feel the same way. Or, oh, gee, yeah, I'm interested in that. If I have a call to action, I go comment below. I don't just go like, hey, sign up. But I say comment below. Why? Then they go on the list. They go on the list. Now, when you're new, what I recommend every new person do, and actually, I'm, I'm going to take that back. I recommend just everybody do this. If you, want, if you want your business to grow in the next couple of months, maybe you're one of the people you're going for maybe the diamond bonus, or you're just looking to build a business. Maybe you're new. Maybe you've been around a while. I don't think it matters. Most people have never done this. And if you do this and do what I'm telling you to do, your business will grow. Again, remember, you're an entrepreneur. That means you're responsible. So you can either take this advice or not. All I can do is give you the advice. There's a thing in the back office. I'm sure uh, Christy can go and pull it and post it in your group. It's called a memory jogger. It's really simple. It's like a five page document. And it just says, who do you know in the following categories? And it goes through your family. So aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, sisters, you know, all these people that you have relationships with. And then it goes through by, um, it's even got like by state, which is a little crazy, but it's got by profession. And you start to think, oh, I know a teacher. Guess what? Teachers are great network marketers. They're great network marketers because they tend to be empathetic and they know how to communicate. All right. Then you kind of go through and you're like, oh, military. Oh yeah. Hey, you know what? Military don't have to pay the monthly business service fee. But that's huge. Who do I know who's in the military? Who could I talk to? And then you make a list of all of these people's names. We do this live at the events that Jimmy and I do. We do it live. And we have, and then we give out prizes for whoever can come up with the most names. We have people who come up with like 200 plus names. What if you had a list with 200 names on it? Would 200 people sign up and become a coach? No. No, probably not. Probably not. Probably a bunch of them are not even going to respond to your message. That's not the point. The point is that you make a list and you have this list and then you work from that list. A couple of suggestions here, okay, that, that we have technology to make our lives easier and these are things that I do. Uh, just yesterday, i give you an example. Just yesterday, I, I posted, uh, we do a monthly challenge for our team and our group. It's a monthly fitness challenge and we give out some prizes. And so that's my marketing, right? And then I posted, hey, if, if you could earn up to $300 just for, taking control of your health and fitness over the next 30 days, would you be interested in learning more about that? Something very simple like that, um, which reminds me about if, if I would you, but I'll get back to that. And, and I had a couple of people who said, yeah, I'd be interested in taking a look at some information. Cool. Guess what I did? I wrote their names on the list and then I sent them a personal message. Hey, here's what I was talking about in my post. All you got to do is have, make sure that I'm your coach. And this guy, he wasn't, he's a contact of mine. We've been friends on Facebook. I kind of didn't even know who he was. <laughs> um, but uh, so now he goes on my list and I get him, I get him started with the challenge. He already had P90X. I'm like, cool, dude, if you want to do P90X, that's fine with me. Get, I get him in my group. And then I, I change my settings on Facebook for him. And I put him to what's called C first. So you can go, it's under the, um, hold on, let me find it really quickly before I tell you. <laughs> If you click on somebody's name, you go to their page and there's a thing that says following. And under the drop down menu for following, there's two options, default or see first. All see first does is put them at the top of your newsfeed. That's it. You can also set them to close acquaintance, in which case you will see every single post that they post. I, I do that if I, if I think it's a really hot prospect, I'll do that. But with this person, I just wanna connect. Right, so I wanna know if he is at a movie with his kids. And I wanna, like, hey, I love that movie. Comment, comment, we're building a relationship. That's all it is. I also do another thing, which is I have a Facebook friends list. So once you're on my, my piece of paper list, if we're, if we're not friends on Facebook, that's gonna happen. 
if you're not going to be friends with me on Facebook, probably not going anywhere, right? But once we're friends on Facebook, they're under the friends category, which is along the um, the right hand side. I don't know if I'm mirrored or not, but left hand left hand side of the screen. I'm sorry. Uh, there's under friends. You can create a list, and I just have a prospects list. It's called my prospects list. They don't know they're on a list. When I click on that list, what happens is I get a news feed of only my prospects. No ads. No uh, political rants. No, uh, my crazy friends are out drinking with their buddies or whatever. Just my prospects. I check in with that every day. Every day I'm in there and I'm going, okay, what is this person doing? What's that person doing? Oh, you're eating healthy. Awesome. Comment, <laughs> right? Oh, you're not eating healthy. Okay. Maybe I can help you. <laughs> and maybe that's more like a message. You have to have a list and you have to use that list. Using the list looks like this. Important phrase to write down, implement, just start talking this way. And if, I, if you have kids, by the way, this is how you get your kids to do stuff, <laughs> okay? This is a very influential phrase I'm about to give you. If I, would you, all right? If I, would you, start talking that way. If I created um, a 30-day accountability group or a seven-day free clean eating group or a whatever it is you're creating, would you be interested in more information about that? Okay. If I, would you, if I did this, would you be interested or would you do that? When I'm talking to people about the business opportunity, this is where, this is where there's a couple of things when you're sharing the business opportunity where you got to be on point. The first one is that you have to have an elevator speech that you can tell confidently. I, I tell my people, I need to be able to come into your bedroom at three in the morning, shake you awake and ask you what you do. And you need to rattle it off and rattle it off confidently. If, if somebody asks you what you do and you start going, ah, ah, well, I sort of, I do, it's kind of like this and it's a little like that. They go like, that's shady. <laughs> that's not safe. Like whatever that is, is weird and shady. But if you ask me what I do and I tell you that I own a company that markets and distributes fitness DVDs and supplements, have you ever heard of P90X or Insanity? You go, okay, there's, I, I don't know what exactly that was, you know, but yeah, I've heard of P90X and Insanity. And then we start a conversation. And what do I do? I go straight into my story. I go straight into my story and the story I'm typically telling because I'm really looking for business partners at this point more than I am customers because I got a lot of customers. Um, I'm look, I'm, I'm telling them the story about the economy falling apart. And I know, yeah, I used to practice law and the economy fell apart. You know, I, I draw it out a little bit more and I tell them how unhappy I was doing that. So I decided to go do something else. And if they, if that sparks some interest from them and they're interested about it, it doesn't matter whether this happens face to face or it happens via messenger or email. It doesn't matter. It's the same process. I start to tell them my story. And then if they show some interest, I ask them, you know, if I sent you like an eight minute video uh, that explains a little bit more about what I do, is that something you might be interested in taking a look at? If I did send you the video, would you take a look at it? That simple. And then I send them the introduction to Team Beachbody video. Like no rocket science. I don't have some fancy, you know, video that is professionally, pro I use Beachbody's video. And why do I use Beachbody's video? Because Anybody can use Beachbody's video. And we talked a little bit about this, Christy and I did offline, about um, duplication. And I'll get to that when we talk about number eight. But it's important that you're duplicatable. But that's what making a list and using it looks like. Marketing versus inviting. You've got to get this clear. What people want to do is just be able to post on Facebook and have droves of people come to you. That might work if, if, like me, you spent the last eight years building a Facebook page that has over 55,000 people who like it. I could pay 20 bucks and, and get a bunch of people who are interested in that. It's not that hard. Do you have that? Because I didn't have that. I didn't have any of it when I started. What I did was I went through the memory jogger and I made a list. And then I went down that list and I said, I know this person, I know this person, I know this person. If I, would you? If I, would you? And a bunch of people said no. And some people said yes. And the people who said, yes, I did my best to get them started down the right path. Make a list, use it, distinguish between marketing and inviting. Number seven, expand your network. It's built into exactly the same thing. Here's what I see a lot of people do. They, 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 maybe they take up the memory jogger and actually go through and they actually do it. <gasps> but they don't ever add anybody to their list. They, your list is not a stagnant thing. Okay, if your list is stagnant, your business is stagnant. I can guarantee you that. I can just guarantee you that if you're talking to the same people over and over and over again, your business is not going anywhere because they've already made a decision about whether they're in or they're out. And that's up to them. It's up to them. Okay. 
you have to constantly be adding people to your network. And it depends on how you, the way you do that is about the way that you decide how you're going to market. Okay. And who, who your target market is. It might be people at your church. It might be people at soccer practice. It might be people who are interested in collecting stamps. I don't know who your people are. That's part of what you've got to do is understand who your target market is. And there's re, there's plenty of resources to figure that out. Understand who your target market is and then always be adding those people. Like I just got a dog about six months ago, six, six, six month old Vishla puppy. And I'm connecting with all these people in these Facebook groups that are just about these particular breed, breed of dogs. And a lot of it is just kind of training stuff that we're exchanging, but they see me working out with them. They see me swimming with them and, and, and running with them. And I'm there, I'm talking about it. A lot of those people really wish that they had the physical ability to keep up with their dog. Well, what's that going to turn into for me as it starts to mature and grow and I start adding them to my network, which I am now. Eventually, they're going to become customers, and eventually, some are going to become coaches because I'm expanding my network. You've got to keep growing it. It doesn't mean you have to have a Facebook page with 55,000 people who like it, but if you do this long enough, like I have, that will happen. That's just a function of that. Expand your network. Those are more people to market to and more people to invite. Um, okay, number eight, be system dependent. Here's, here's what I really mean by this, be system dependent, and this is an important point. It doesn't matter what works. It matters what duplicates, okay? One of the reasons I don't do a lot of the join my business posts is because they work, they might work, okay? They might work. I might get a coach out of that. But what that, what that coach does, when you're recruiting a new coach, you have to understand this out of the gate. Everything you do is teaching, everything. From the moment somebody gets into your challenge group, you're teaching them how to behave. You're teaching them what to do. If what you're doing is so hyper complicated that they can't do it, it will not duplicate. If you're one of these people who knows everything there is to know about Shakeology, you know the life cycle of ashwagandha. Okay, that's great. I love it. I appreciate that you, are, you have in-depth knowledge of it. But if that's your marketing, what you're telling me is I can only do this business if I know the life cycle of ashwagandha. I'll give you an example. When, when Monica and I first started this business, we used to go and do home parties and do presentations like in people's houses. And we had this projector and the projector was like, this really nice. It was like back in the day, everybody has a projector now, right? But this is back in the day when this projectors, you know, in 2008 projectors were 600, 700 bucks. And I remember doing the presentation and more often than not, one of the questions was how much was that projector? And I was like, why are they so interested in the stupid projector? Because what I was telling them was, in order to do this business, you need to get into people's houses and you need to buy a $600 projector. And, need to, and you need to be able to do this fancy presentation that I have put out here in front of you. You need, to be, you need to be comfortable standing in front of a group of people and talking to them about our business and our life and explaining all that stuff. Guess what? People don't wanna do that. They, they don't wanna get up in front of a group of people. They don't wanna go to people's houses. They, don't, they certainly don't wanna spend 600 bucks on a projector. So you have, to, you have to change, you have to look at, okay, well, what will duplicate? What will work? What will work is the introduction to Team Beachbody video because anybody, anybody can make a list and send an invitation to people, create relationships, market, and then send an invitation to people that says, if I sent you an eight minute video that explains a little bit more about our business, would you take the time and watch it and learn a little bit more about it? Anybody can do that and then send them that video. Don't need a $600 projector. You don't need to go to somebody's house. It's simple. It's simple. People want to recreate the wheel. Hey, you know what? That might take advantage of your strengths and it might work. But if you're wondering why your team isn't growing, it's likely because you're doing something that doesn't duplicate. Facebook ads in this day and age are the number one example of this that I can give you. Do Facebook ads work and email marketing? Yes, yes, yes. And I run, fa I run Facebook ads. I do full transparency because they work. Do they duplicate? Not really, not really because it, it plays into my strengths. It's technical, it's complicated. It requires a lot of work to set up and you gotta like overthink it. <laughs> That's right in my wheelhouse. It works, but it doesn't duplicate. So when I'm, when I'm working with a new coach, I have to be able to give them a system that works. So I don't use Facebook ads to recruit. I use Facebook ads to attract people as customers. 
And then I'm got them in a challenge group and I'm working with them. It's just another way to make a list, right? What I see people doing is they're running Facebook ads and the Facebook ads are like recruiting ads. Well, that's great, unfortunately, and it might work, but unfortunately what you just taught somebody to do is in order to do this business, you gotta be able to run a Facebook ad and not very many people are willing to learn how to do it or pay for it. They don't, it doesn't duplicate. It doesn't matter what works. It matters what duplicates when you're trying to build a team. This stuff, this duplicates. This is what works. This, is, this stuff duplicates right here because if people will do these things, and make a list and understand how to tell their story and market and then specifically invite that works that works and if the invitation process is easy which it is exactly it uh, you know i might use a facebook ad to get somebody into a group then they're in the group and i'm coaching with them and building a relationship with them and helping them build their fitness journey but once it comes time to talk to you about becoming a coach there's no facebook ad that's part of that that's me asking you directly if i sent you a, a eight minute video would you take the time and learn a little bit more about becoming a coach. Actually, the first question I asked them, hey, you know, I usually, uh, back up a little bit, I usually, in that situation, what I usually do is send them a message, compliment them on their results and their participation in the group. And um, especially if they've been a really, I try to kind of turn over control of the group to the members. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. When it does, I really compliment them on that. And I say, you're doing all the things that a coach really does as part of a challenge group. It's a little bit more involved in that, but as when it comes to running a challenge group, you'd be really good at this. Have you ever thought about becoming a team beach body coach? I've never had anybody say, nope, I've never thought about it. I've had people say, yeah, I've thought about it. And the answer is no, I've had that. At which point I go, cool, no problem. My job is just to ask. Your job is to decide. My job is to ask. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. Let's go back to our challenge group and remain challengers, All right? If the answer is, but the answer usually is, yes, I've thought about it. I've looked at the information on teambeachbody.com. I've looked at the information on your website. I've talked to some people, whatever. They thought about it. They thought about it. And then we have a short conversation and I say, if I sent you an eight minute video to look at, would you take the time to look at it? The reason I'm doing that is because when I train them how to do this, they need to, they need to do whatever it was that I did with them. And I, and then I can take them back and I can say, Hey, remember how we did this? You got into my group. We worked together. We built a relationship. You had great results and you were awesome. And then I ask you if you'd ever thought about becoming a beach body coach and you said that you had, and then I ask you if I was sent you an eight minute video, would you watch it? And you said yes. And then you watched the video and then I followed up with you. A couple of important things when you're following up with people. First question, what did you like best about the information you saw? That's your first question. Okay. After you a little chit chat, like if you get on and you got to get on the phone with people about this, don't be afraid to get on the phone. You got, you have to learn how to do this and getting on the phone with is really the way to do it. Get them on the phone, a little bit of chit chat, catch up. Then the first question you ask when it comes to the biz op is what did you like best about the information you saw at that point? You need to shut up and start doing it. Christy's doing it right now, which is right. <laughs> okay. You need to write. If you, it, this is a big tip when you're on the phone with people, two things, Number one, stand up, okay? Gets the blood flowing in your legs and it keeps you on your toes. You think better when you're standing. Number two, take notes. Two reasons. Number one, you need to be able to understand what, what people, the information you're getting. Number two, it shuts you up. You're busy writing, so you don't talk. And you don't wanna be talking here. The more you talk, the less you win. Don't talk. Ask questions and listen. Number one question, what did you like best? I can work with any answer. Any answer that I get, I can work with. Some people will say the opportunity or an extra income. Cool. What are we going to talk about? The opportunity or an extra income. Some people will talk about the opportunity to be a part of a fitness company that they've always wanted to be a personal trainer, but couldn't go through the thing. Guess what we're going to talk about that. Some people will talk about, oh my gosh, summit looks like such a blast. I would love to meet and work out with Sean T. Okay, cool. Would you like a photo with him? Because if you just meet some minimum sales requirements in, in any given month, you're probably going to get an opportunity to do that. That's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. Now, when I was new and I didn't understand this, when somebody would say an opportunity to, to be a part of a community, I would start talking about them about money and I would lose it right away because that's not why they're here. That's not why they're here. And our job fundamentally is to help people achieve their goals and live healthier and more fulfilling lives. That's your job. That's your job. I can't do that unless I know what you want. So I got to figure that out. What is it that you want? So we start to talk about that. Then I start to ask them questions like, 
well, okay, so that's, that's what you like best. I, I connect all the dots for them and kind of maybe show them how that works. That might be on the money side. That might be on the, I just want to take a picture with Shanti side. Like it just depends on what they want to talk about. But I connect the dots for them and show them how that's possible. Okay, a little bit. Not like breaking down the comp plan into 200 and 100 and binary and using words they don't even understand. Just basic. We earn money two different ways, right? If you're retail sales, you make an app, usually you make about 25% on those things. On some things, you earn more than 25%, like challenge packs is more like 36. BOD commissions are 40%. That's one way. The second way is you teach other people how to do the first thing. If they're productive, you earn a bonus based on their activity. That's usually about as in-depth as I get with a comp plan when I'm talking to people about our business and they're interested in money. If they've got more specific questions, sure, we can drill down a little bit, but I don't really wanna do an exhaustive explanation of that stuff. I wanna keep it simple. Why? It's the same as the life cycle of ashwagandha and Shakeology. If I get too in-depth, I'm sending them a message that you gotta know everything before you can do anything. That will either cause them not to sign up or paralyze them, and you don't wanna do that. So. That's the basic process that you're talking about. And it's just an ask. At the end, it's just an ask. Are you ready to go? You know, are you ready to go? And if they say no, I, and the next question is, is there something you would need to know or see in order to be able to be ready to go? And if they tell me, yeah, I need to, whatever, read the policies and procedures. I read, I read, I'm a lawyer. I read the policies and procedures with a highlighter before I agreed to do this business. Who does that? Me. I needed to do that. That, that was just my process. I've had very few people ask to do that, but if they ask me, I'm like, cool, I'll send you a link. You take your time with it. Take your time with it. I'll be back in like a week and a half, you know? Take your time with it, read it. And we, when I come back, we'll talk all about it. Does that happen? Maybe it's two people who've ever done that. And <laughs> probably one of them, okay? Um, but what information would you need in order to get to yes, all right? If they say no. If they say, you know what, it's just not for me, the answer is cool. Okay, that that's fine. I just want, let's make sure that you understand that we maintain our customer coach relationship. We work together and you're still in the group and I still want you to get success. This was, I'm all about it. You're a valuable member of my community and it never changes. All right, and, and preserve that relationship. I've had a lot of people, when I say a lot of people, I'm talking like five to 10 over the course of my career who were testing me. That's it, they were just testing me. They wanted to see how hard I would push. What would happen if they said no? Would I come back with some kind of a steamroller? I'm going to sign you used car salesman approach. And when I said, oh, that's fine. They went, okay, wait a minute. Maybe I had a, the wrong conception about this business. And a month later, they came back and said, I thought a little bit more about it. And I looked at some more information and maybe I am ready to do this thing. Oh, what do you know? That happens if you let them have their space and you let people understand that your job is to ask. That's your job as a coach. Ask. Their job is to decide. So you don't decide for them. Don't decide for them when you're making your list and don't decide for them when it's time to ask them to become a coach and maybe they're not interested. Because the truth is there are some people who don't wanna be lawyers. There are some people who don't wanna be painters. There are some people who don't wanna be pastors and there are some people who don't wanna be coaches. That's just the way it goes. It's not for everybody. You've gotta be willing to, to, to accept no as a complete sentence. You also have to be willing to accept yes as a complete sentence. Okay, there's, I was listening to a podcast yesterday and I heard this great, this great quote, don't sell past the close. <laughs> okay, if somebody says yes, sign them up. Stop talking, stop talking. Don't, don't, don't keep going on about the comp plan and how fun it's gonna be or anything else. It's just, okay, you're ready to get started? Boom, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, you know, you get the mobile enroller, you set them up, I'm gonna send you a link, you're gonna click the link and then you're gonna complete the process. And that's how it works. Boom, shut up, do that. You got time to train them later, sign them up. That's yes is a complete sentence. You know, take that answer and run with it. Then when you're sponsoring them, I've already talked about this. It's about understanding why they're here. Which one of these four people are you? Discount, uh, you know, get your supplements covered, 500,000 full-time career doing this thing. Where are you at on that spectrum? My job is to help you understand what it's going to take to get there and help you, you know, with understanding all this, all these 10 things. This is what I go through with people. I've actually, this training's all online. I'll give you guys a link for that. And you guys can feel more, you're more than, I'm more than happy to have you guys use that. A bunch of people use it. 
um, where I do go like way in depth on all of these things. Um, duplication is the key to that being system dependent is about duplication, making sure you're doing stuff that duplicates, not just works, but duplicates. If you're doing something that other people can't do, this is why the, you know, um, halter top and booty shorts, just self sweaty selfies don't really work because they don't really duplicate because not a lot of people want to do that. And, um, some people don't have the body to do it. So you gotta be doing something everybody can do. Just keep that in mind as you're coming up with your marketing and your inviting. All right, uh, moving on, treat, get a success partner. Uh, this one is pretty obvious. You need to have somebody to bounce ideas off. You need somebody who have, you have accountability with. You need somebody that you talk to on a regular basis who you can be open, honest, and vulnerable with and talk about not just your struggles, but your successes and come up, coming up with plans. The closer you can work with that person, the better. Cross line is great. I, that's what I prefer is somebody who's cross line from you. Don't try and be success partners with somebody that you've sponsored into the business. That's not, that's not your role. Your sponsor, your sponsor and coach. That's, that's, that's a different relationship than a success partner. A success partner is somebody who's on even level with you and wants to grow to a higher level together. Jimmy is my success partner. We've done two different mastermind programs together. I don't know how many tens of thousands of dollars on personal development we've spent going to seminars together because we're constantly leveling up. And there are times when I get a little higher than him and then he catches me and passes me. And then I catch up and then maybe pass him. And that's how it works. And we're pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. That's a success partner. Find somebody who can do that for you. Your group is a great place to look. It's a great place to start. Talk to Christy, you know, talk to Christy. There's a lot of places, especially if you're a diamond coach or star diamond coach, there's a lot of other groups we're in where there are people on, on separate teams outside of you guys who are looking for success partners for their diamond and star diamond coaches. Okay. So don't be afraid to, to seek that out. Last one is kind of a catch all. It's treat your business like a business. Um, kind of goes back to this idea that you're an entrepreneur and that it's on you and that if it works, it's cause you did it. And if it didn't, it doesn't work because you didn't do it. Uh, you know? And so uh, I think that's, that's really what that thing is about. Also, I think you have to understand a few like basics of the business. You know, if you had a business um, painting houses, you would know at any given time how much money that business had, what its assets were, what its liabilities were, how much money you had coming in, what jobs you had next month. You'd know all that stuff because you have a lot on the line. Well, in this business, we don't have a lot on the line. You know what people do? They start to get a little bit down on themselves and they stop checking in with their back office. They just stop checking in, stop looking at their business. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. When was the last time you had a plant that you stopped watering and it just flourished? It just flourished. Okay. Maybe, yeah, there's some crazy cactus that does that. But for the most part, if you stop watering a plant, it dies. That's what happens. It dies. That's a big piece of treating your business like a business. Checking in. I'm t for me, it's a daily thing. It's a daily thing where I look at my business. My I'm talking about my coach online office every day, every day. And on Thursday, I take about an hour and a half. <laughs> now I got a big team of people that I'm working with and I have a lot of different reports that I run. I run a weekly volume production report. That's very time consuming. But I also go through each of the five business centers. I look at what the income was. Does the check look right? Did I get paid for, for the work that I did? Is, is there, did somebody rank advance that I need to maybe acknowledge? Did somebody drop in rank that I need to reach out to and say, Hey, can I help you? Like, seems like you're struggling. You know, are there other things that happens? You know, whatever leadership ladder advancements, all this stuff, all this stuff, you have to dig in and know your business and then you got to pay attention to it and you've got to help it grow. It's also about knowing things like, we pay quarterly taxes. If you make more than 600 bucks a year, you're required to pay income taxes on that. But that doesn't, there's no one who's taking it out of your check. The days of being an employee are gone. When it comes to this business, you might be an employee somewhere else. When it comes to here, you take responsibility for it. That's treating your business like a business. Maybe it's time to form an LLC or a corporation because you have a tax savings benefit with one of those two things. Totally dependent on what state you're in. You need to go talk to a lawyer about those things, about whether it's time to do that or not. Um, there was a time when an LLC made sense. Now we're an S corp because it made sense. This is a business. One of the things I did when I started this business in, in 2000, at the end of 2008, when I got really involved with this thing, I treated it like it was a million dollar business from day one, from day one, because that's what I wanted it to be. 
And it wasn't a dream. Okay, it wasn't a dream. It was a, it was work. It was a job. <laughs> it was something that I was going to go have to go create this thing. But 100%, I knew I was going to go do it. So I treated it that way. I took care of it. You know, when other people came around who tried to hurt that business, whether it was people from other companies or whatever, I defended it vigorously, vigorously. And I've, I've, I've been unpopular with some people because of that. I don't care. I don't care. You want to take food out of my kid's mouth and I'm not going to let you. That's just the way I looked at it from day one. From day one, when people try to tell me it was a scam, I had, I'll tell you a quick story. I, I, I practiced the first four years, five years of law practice. I worked for an incredible guy. He's still a close friend. He's one of the best mentors I've ever had. I left him in Washington. I moved to Phoenix and I went and worked for the eighth largest law firm in the world where I was making a pile of money being miserable. And I decided I was going to join Beachbody and I was reaching out to people. His wife was on my list because she had been doing Tybo. Remember Billy Blank's Tybo? She had been doing Tybo VHS tapes for like 10 years. And I knew that. And I was like, you're on my list of people to reach out to. Don't you want to do something else? Like, are you sick of Billy Blank's? And it turns out she was. He got wind of this and he picked up the phone and he called me and he said, you are making a huge mistake. You're one of the brightest young lawyers I've ever met. And uh, this is a huge mistake. I don't know what you're thinking here. Maybe just come back to Washington, come back to work for me. We can make this happen. You know, this is just a pipe dream. Like, this is crazy. You can't do that. And I thanked him for doing that. And I went right back to what I was doing. I went right back to it. Because day one, this was a million dollar business for me. Day one. That's what it was for me. Treat your business like it's a real business. Unless you're a number one or a number two person. If you're here to get a discount, just rock a discount. Why you would spend an hour and 10 minutes listening to me prattle on about this stuff. If all you want is a discount on supplements. I have no idea. And I tell people that. Don't do my training. If you're a number one person, don't even do the training. You know, here's the shop button. Do you know how to shop? Cool. If you get beyond something, you want to do more than shop, then you come talk to me. If you're a number two person, four vital behaviors. Good enough. Good enough. You can get by on that almost every month. You know, get a little group going, a little accountability group. Get some people in there. You make enough money to cover your Shakeology. Number three, number four person, $500,000, full-time career type people. You need to dig in with these 10 things. And that's part of treating your business like a business is honestly learning this stuff and digging in with it and drilling down, learning the new skills, practicing those skills, having success with them, and then teach. Then teaching people that. It's not that hard. What we do is really simple. It doesn't mean it's easy. It's hard because it's, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy. It's difficult because you're going to have to take yourself on. You're going to have to have a, take a good hard look in the mirror and understand your strengths and your weaknesses and do a lot. You might have to do a ton of personal development. I still do a lot of personal development because I have a busy mind that makes up a lot of crazy stories. And I have, if I don't take control of that and I just let it spin out of control and just start watching the news all day long, it, it doesn't lead to good places. So I got to have a podcast in my head nonstop, just nonstop. And when I do, boom, super productive, focused, ready to go. When I don't, not so much. Okay. So those are really the things I wanted to talk about. Um, as I said earlier, uh, I have a whole training website that has all this stuff on it. Um, it's got really two things on it. There's the first 30 training, which is like Beachbody's first 30 training. It's kind of my version of it. A lot of what is involved there. It's just kind of my take on that. Then there's also the playbook training, which is the stuff that I went through here. And there's, I don't know, like a 20 minute video on each one of these topics where I dive in and sometimes I'll share helpful resources or whatever. Um, I'll post a link to that. You guys are more than welcome to use that. Um, only caveat with that is uh, don't join our Facebook group. <laughs> Part of the instructions for, for new coaches are join the Facebook group. And so I got a lot of people because a lot of other people are using the site as well. They found it really helpful. And I have no problem with that. The Facebook group I, I guard kind of carefully, as you probably know from having your own Facebook group, it's important to, to sort of do that. But um, yeah, that's really what I had for you. I hope that's been helpful. Um, I hope that I hope that you guys will dig in and do the work. You know, it, it is it is a lot of work. Uh, most of it is mental. <laughs> um, you know, there's not a lot of physical work here. We're not digging ditches or painting houses. Um, but if you'll do it and you'll stick around and you'll be consistent and you'll do these 10 things, you'll see the growth and you'll see the development. And if you do stuff that's duplicatable, it moves away from you. 
it moves away from you. When when you when you can when you can teach Bob how to teach Sally, how to teach Ann, <laughs> that's when this thing has now grown away from you because now everybody's teaching everybody three levels deep and we're working three levels deep in the organization. That's why the diamond rank is based on that. It's based on three levels. It's you, your Emerald and your Emerald's personal people, right? That's three levels. That's why, that's why it's set up that way because that's really what it's about. And you can't do that if you're doing some, something that nobody else can do. You know, it relies on your own particular expertise, which might be getting on stage or it might be um, a nutrition nerd. You gotta be doing stuff that everybody can do. And if you can do that, you just teach them the system. The system's just right here. You just teach them this stuff, put that in play. So um, that's really what I had. Thank you so much, Dave. Yeah, if you could post all the links up underneath on our team. For sure, I'll just put it in the comments on the live. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of people that work during the day, and um, so they're definitely going to be watching this. And and I took several notes. And this my team calls the same way. I do mine at at eleven o'clock uh, on Tuesday afternoon uh, or morning. Uh, and and not a lot of people come on live because they're busy, they're working, and they just watch the recording. You know, I've a couple of years ago, I had to sort of reassess my relationship with this business and uh, doing stuff at night is just out for me now. I, I just, that's the time, uh, the way I look at it, that time just doesn't belong to me anymore. Yeah. Uh, it really belongs to my girlfriend and my kids and maybe my dog and <laughs> my friends. Uh, business <laughs> well, this is time. perfect so. because I, I mean, this call was so good that I'm going to listen to it probably three or four times. <laughs> so I'm glad this is perfect. Awesome. Well, I'm glad I could do that. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'm in the group too. So if you have, um, if you're watching this, you have questions or whatever, uh, something I said didn't make any sense, just post a comment, tag me. I'll pop in, answer questions if I can. Thank you, Dave, so much. Of Bye course. Soon. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks again for uh, sticking in there with me. I know this was a long call.